to 6.30 p.m. Uh, in the evening, and it's Monday through Friday. Um, and people can have uh, standing reservations, which means if they have appointments or need to get to a job on a Monday, Wednesday, Friday at 9 o'clock, they can reserve that slot and have that reservation for Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 9. And the same thing if they needed something at 3 or 4 o'clock to get back home. Um, we were here, we drove around to a lot of the social service agencies in the area, dropping off flyers. Uh, we went to some senior centers to talk to people um, who were thinking about possibly transitioning out of their vehicles um, and onto possibly something like the flex service. Um, the flex service doesn't travel outside the zone, but it will connect you to buses that will take you outside the zone. Um, so in all the flex zones, the flex service will connect you to buses that will get you into Providence and out of the zone. Is there an additional cost to use that? Uh, no, the flex service is the same as a regular bus, tr bus trip. It's $2 each way. So is it anywhere in this orange zone or just the, the orange highlighted streets? No, anywhere within the orange zone. Um, and the, on the front, there's a list of quite a few of the places that it does, that it does go to. Um, and we find that, you know, in some, some of the flex zones, it's utilized quite a bit and some of them not so much. So that's why we wanted to come out here and revisit West Warwick and Coventry and try to get uh, the service jump-started a little bit to sort of explain to people exactly what it is. There were quite a few people who didn't know what it was at all. Um, so we reached out to them, and we were willing to come back and speak to and do some travel training and speak to some people who run agencies and sort of <coughs> explain it to them so they can explain it to their clients or uh, fellow co-workers as well. Have you visited any of the West Warwick Housing Authorities? Um, I'm not sure that we have, not as of yet. Barbara's saying yes. Say, so. we did? Oh, no, I'm saying that's a good idea. Oh, all right. That's, uh, <laughs> I, I didn't actually bring a list of all the places that we did visit, okay. but we visited quite a few. Is the um, seven-day pass unlimited? The seven-day pass? Is twenty-five dollars. Is that the regular bus or is that the flex? That's the seven-day pass seven is a regular, it's a regular, it's a regular yeah. Bus. Okay, yep. so that's not. But it, it works on this as well. It does. It's the, yeah, yeah, all, all the, yep, it, it's the same as a regular bus. Okay. So monthly passes work on it, you know, seven-day passes work on it. Any, anything that you buy to ride a regular bus, you can use on this you bus. Said, and you said, you mentioned about bringing them to, whether it's jobs or appointments yep. or something. So what if it's outside this area where they, the doctor is outside of this orange area, though? It won't go so there. it's got to be somewhere to this area, in this area, Correct. as long as it's all in this. this yep. Okay. I have a lot of Jerry, though. Unless, no, unless, it, it is. I'm just unless it's getting you to a, a, a fixed bus route. Bus, which will get you out of the zone. But it looks like it has the hospital and all yep, that. And yep, yep, It has quite a few places um, in it. Yeah, and we visited most of those places. We went to Kent County Hospital. Um, we visited the VNA there as well because um, the, the visiting nurses have some people who might want to use this as well. And like I said, we're, having, we're doing an event at the Senior Center this week. And we went to Thunder Mist as well and spoke to them too. Awesome. 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 Thank you. You're Great. welcome. Yes, thank, thank you, you very much. much. And like I said, if anybody needs any more information, we have some stuff over. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This is a great program. Excuse me. I'm sorry I missed the beginning of the very beginning of this meeting, but I'm asking if, in out of respect for the police and firemen that are here tonight, can we move the meeting up to um, item P number three? Because very much people would like to discuss this, and I think it's appropriate to those people that are that are here for this issue as well as. Like I said, the police, the fire, and the media. That's all right. That's, the, that's do, the plan. Well, we plan on doing letter E next because it's a presentation. It shouldn't take that long. And then we, we talked about moving it up. So thank okay. you. Okay. Appreciate it. A resolution authorizing the town manager to enter in, into a memorandum of agreement with Thundermets for acceptance, acceptance of grant money for the construction of a children's fitness park at River Point Park, sponsored by Council President Goslin. I'll move the resolution. I'll second. Move and second. Uh, again, I, I'd like to thank Krista and uh, Thundermist. Uh, they came to us a little about, almost a little under a year ago and talked about a grant for a playground at uh, where, and where we can put, put one, um, considering we, we do have a new one up at the uh, high school. But again, many of our families use uh, River Point Park as a uh, place of where they play games, and a lot of young families go there during practices and whatever, and their children go down to the playground. Well, that playground was dismantled about 
five, six years ago due to safety reasons it was never replaced. And when Krista came to me with this, I said, River Point Park's perfect. And so they have, they have applied for the grant and they just want to be able to work with the town manager and be able to move into a partnership so we can accept the grant. And also they're looking at possibly applying for more grants to also make this an adult playground uh, for senior citizens and whatever else and get some exercise out there. So I think this is a, a, a great idea. Uh, again, I want to thank Thunder Miss for their hard work and they always keep us involved. I think she's in the middle over there. Um, so any any questions? And do you want to make any comment? No, no? Uh, I don't. Thank you for the opportunity just to clarify the funding from Rhode Island Foundation. No, no, it's okay. Just state your name and uh, Tamara Berman. I am the community organizer on behalf of West Warwick Has, employee of Thunder Miss. Just to clarify, the funds um, do come from Rhode Island Foundation, and the grant has been received. And this whole initiative is really driven by the community. So the Health Equity Zone is really a collective impact of the organizations and residents in the community that have expressed this need. So um, it's really <laughs> resident and community driven. And we're excited to embark on the project. No, again, thank you. Yeah. No questions. Any other questions? Thank you. Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank Ayes have it. Thank you. I'd like to make a motion to move P2 and 3 up on the agenda. Second. Move and second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, did I say? Three and four. No, three and four. You want to redo that? I'm sorry. I'd like to make a motion to move P3 and 4 up on the agenda. I apologize. Second. Moved and second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Call. We're on P. Appointment of Pension Board Member Jerry Waite, sponsored by Councilman Messier. Jay, you put this on the agenda? All right. Well, obviously, a lot of people are here for this item on the agenda. Uh, three weeks ago, uh, we had an appointment for the Pension Board. And uh, with a vote of four to one, we appointed Jerry Lee. It was the next day on social media, uh, most of us learned uh, that Jerry had a previous felony conviction. Um, it wasn't until WPRI did the story last week that I learned the full details of the story. Um, part of me wants to be upset at the people who knew this information and didn't bring it forward to us. Part of me wants to be upset with Jerry Lee for not fully disclosing all the information. But as a town council, it's our responsibility to look into these things. It's not that difficult to check somebody's BCI. If you have a job at Walmart working as a cashier or a door greeter, they do a BCI. We should, we should absolutely have a protocol in place for that. Um, and the bottom line is, again, it's, it's us as a council. We should have looked into it deeper. Um, I do believe in second chances. I do think Jerry has been a positive contributor for the past couple of years in the community. I do like Jerry. However, the pension board is absolutely not the place for Jerry at this time. Um, people can change and grow, as I said, and Jerry can still be involved in the community in many other ways. Um, but tonight I'm asking personally for the resignation from the pension board from Jerry Lee. Any other comments? Mr. the council? Well, I'm, I'm going to say something here. Um, there was a, a four to one vote. It's no secret I was the one. Um, and for the reasons I stated at the last meeting. Um, and a post came out, everybody, I think everybody at this point knows I'm not a big fan of social media. Um, it has good points and bad points. Um, but a, a post came out that I am going to defend because it, it, it was about me. Um, mentioning from Jerry, um, it's in the quote was, wow, I mean, come on, we had a council member question my intelligence the evening of my appointment, which quite frankly made for some comic relief. Well, first of all, for the record, I, I, I don't think anybody who applies should be on a board just because they want to be, or they have a little bit of background. And this just isn't, isn't about this one about you in particular. It's, it could be about anybody. Um, and that's why I made my vote. But uh, I never questioned intelligence. And I voted based on the application that was submitted and that was in front of me. 
Now, I'm going to save the rest of that piece for the next item. Um, I don't know what part of this is funny. Um, you know, and that, that's the part that bothers me. And, and I didn't write it. I'm responding to it. We're dealing with people's lives here. Pension's about money. The money comes in when people retire. This is what they're going to live on. I don't think there's anything funny about it. And we make decisions up here all day, whether it's tax increases or <clears throat> pensions or we're looking at collective bargaining. It's not fun. You know, we, we're dealing with this is how people live. And it, I, that really took me by surprise. And I, I really take offense to that. So, again, the paperwork that's in front of us, that's what we vote on. You know, as far as going the, the other the other piece of that with the criminal background, there was no procedure in place for this. So I know I'm getting off onto the next topic, but again, I mean I I'll speak for myself. I disagree with what some of what you're saying. You know, everybody has their own opinion. I think at this point, I mean any other questions are most likely legal. And I'm not an attorney. That's all I have to say. <clears throat> So again, um, I think the entire council was in the same position that we learned the following day. Um, I've had conversations with Jerry. Um, previous members knew of that conviction. Never brought that to us, ever. Um, he was appointed to a board on April 3rd. And he was promoted by another person. And knew about that conviction, which, again, none of us knew about. <clears throat> Mary Beth, you were the only one not here, okay? Just makes us look stupid. I, I just, unfortunately, some people who knew about it didn't bring it to us, and, I, and, I, and I, I, feel, I feel the same way Jay does with some things. Like, if we knew about that prior to, we could have had that discussion, and then we could have saved the town looking like fools. We could have saved the poor gentleman whose name got dragged through the mud over the last two weeks on social media, then through Channel 12. And then we would not have been having this discussion here tonight. Unfortunately, that happened. Now, the question I have is the town charter versus the state constitution. And that's where I'm going to ask the solicitor tonight because I haven't really talked to anybody about this. I, I did reply, and everybody says I didn't reply back to Walt Butel. I did. I asked five questions. I didn't get a reply back. So, that, again, I did reply. People might not think so, but I know I did, and I can show the email. And he never answered my questions. He asked me a question, and I asked him a rebuttal question. So, Mr. Solicitor, if, you, if anybody else from the council has a comment, let me know now, and then we'll let the solicitor speak. I'd just like to add something. I mean, obviously, we didn't know about the prior conviction. Um, but on Jerry's behalf, he was previously put on the Board of Assessment and Review. Um, so, yes, it would have been nice if he had told us this prior to, um, you know, putting him on a board. But with the Pension Board, if he was already on the Board of Assessment and Review and nobody seemed to have an issue with it, he probably thought to himself, well, why would I have to say anything now? And I'm not saying that's right or wrong, but I'm just trying to understand from his point of view, why he wouldn't have said anything. But I, I know there's legality in this. I know that there's already been precedent set at both the state level and at a town level, right? And I'm sure that the solicitor can speak to that. And I think it does present an opportunity in the next agenda item, we'll, we'll address that. Um, we've said right along, we need to strengthen the way we, we do business and here. You've been, and you've been and, saying it And, and I mentioned that at the last meeting as well, and I, I firmly believe that. Um, so the onus is on us. There's no doubt about that. Anybody else from the council? Mr. Solicitor? Thank you, Mr. President. First off, this has got nothing to do with the person, the individual. It's got to do with what the law states for any person that's involved in this type of situation. Our constitution in the state of Rhode Island was changed back in the 1980s to address issues of suffrage which means to say if you were convicted of a felony, your right to vote was taken away from you. That was changed with this amendment. And in the amendment, it clearly states, <clears throat> Article 2, Section 2 of the Constitution, an elector 
shall be disqualified as a candidate for elective or appointive state or local office or from holding such office if such elector has been convicted of or pled nolo contendere to a felony or if such elector has been convicted or pled nolo contendere to a misdemeanor resulting in a jail sentence of six months or more, either suspended or to be served. Such elector shall not, once so convicted, attain or return to any office until three years after the date of completion of such sentence and probation or parole. The first time this matter became before our Supreme Court was in the case of State of Rhode Island ex rel Floyd Edmund Webb III versus Vincent A. Cianci. The site is 591 A. 2nd, 1193 in the year 1991, wherein the court found that because of this change in the Constitution, Mr. Cianci, who had been a convicted felon, was eligible to run for the position of mayor in the city of Providence. I'd like to bring to your attention. <coughs> I have to change Excuse us one second. Thank you. This matter came, <clears throat> came before the town back in 2016 in a board of canvases matter regarding former council, uh, councilman from Ward 1, Angelo A. Padula, when there was a challenge to his candidacy uh, because of a criminal conviction that had taken place in his past. <clears throat> the board of canvases made a finding that not only was a, he was a convicted felon, but also that he had done time at the adult correctional institution and his matter, once he went through with his suspended sentence of probation, his matter was expunged. However, the expungement only takes care of the record. It doesn't take care of the crime. His attorney brought forth to the town a memorandum of law <clears throat> that clearly outlined Article 3, Section 2 of the Constitution, which I just read into the record. Now, Mr. Leet, upon moving from the city of Warwick to the town of West Warwick, registered the vote on June 18th, 2015. At that point in time, he's a qualified elector, he's a resident of the town, and he's a registered voter. Under our charter for the pension board, the council can appoint from persons who are qualified electors and residents of the town. That means he qualifies. Under the sections, Article 9 and Article 22, that have been bandied about, Clearly, they are not applicable in that Article 9 deals with personnel. And in Article 9, it's clear that there's exempt personnel and career personnel. But most, if not all, of the issues as it pertains to appointments were for employees and not appointed members by the town council. And Article 22 deals with if there was a crime committed after the appointment, not prior to the appointment. As such, the appointment by the town council back on February 5th is not only valid, legal and, and it's lawful. And again, as the President said, on April 3rd, 2018, Mr. Leet was appointed to the West Warwick Board of Assessment and Review. That deals with taxes. It deals with money. So you actually come before the Tax Board of Assessment and Review, and that board has more say in what happens to your money than the Pension Board does, because Mr. Leet 
or any other member of the pension board is not going to be taking bags of cash to Centerville Bank to deposit them. I hope everyone understands that. Councilman Padula moved the resolution, second by Council Vice President D'Amico. The vote was unanimous, unanimous excuse me, to put Mr. Uh, Leet on the Board of Assessment and Review, and that didn't even take place a year ago. So as far as the legal standards from the Constitution, reviewing the Home Rule Charter, uh, Mr. Leet's record, which clearly indicates that he was convicted of a felony, uh, he was not sent, or excuse me, he had a suspended sentence in probation, which he has completed. The file was closed. He was allowed to re-register and re-qualify as a voter. He was allowed to re-qualify as an elector, and upon moving to the town of West Warwick, registered to be a voter, which means he is eligible to be either an appointed member of a, a board or commission, or he can run for office in this town. And if there's any questions from the council or the manager, I'll be glad to attempt to answer those. If I have one question. If Mr. Lee, if the council decides they want to remove Mr. Lee from the pension board, what legal ramifications is that going to bring? First and foremost, you'd have to have a reason because if you're going to rescind the appointment, you'd have to have a reason. You'd have to provide him with legal notice of the reason. You'd have to give him the opportunity to be heard. And who knows where it would end up after that. Any other questions from the council on this matter? I really don't think he should talk. I don't think anybody should talk about it. Still it's still public it's, comment. It's okay. Jerry's personal matter. And it's up to him if he wants to resign or if he's going to stay on. I mean, we got to look as a council at what we want to do. You know, and if the council doesn't want to act on it, that's up to you. There's nothing we could act on tonight, correct? Because it's on the no. agenda as a correct. discussion. If, if there was going to be any action taken by the council tonight, they'd have to be. Uh, on clarified the, on the next agenda. Next agenda. Yes. Okay. All right. Methods and procedures regarding appointments to boards and commissions. Um, again, we've been talking about this for weeks and months uh, since November. Um, we have a form that we fill out right now, and that form basically is a generic form, name, address, uh, but it doesn't have, do you have a criminal record, do you have... Any of that it doesn't ask any of those questions. So, what is I, I know Jay and uh, Mary Beth, you guys were working on procedures and, and looking at certain things. If you want to bring forward those ideas, you know, we can start putting that in writing right now. You go ahead, you can move on. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I think there needs to obviously needs to be procedures in place. And you know, when, you're, when you're talking forms, and are we talking forms in general? Or just forms for appointments. What, what however you want to, how, how do you want to, how does the council want to handle appointments from moving forward from here on out? Is there, well, I mean, obviously, it's a generic form. Do we want to add things to the Of form course, I think a, pro a procedure needs to be put in place. I think, you know, going forward, I'd like to see something more, of, I don't know, words to use here. A little more in depth, a is, little more. Well, I'm telling you, making it more, more simple and, and having a checklist. So when Joe Smith, comes in to want to serve on a board or a committee or so, that they need the step process of exactly what to do. So you go into the town clerk's office, and there should be staple to the application, here's a checklist. And it could say something like, um, file the fill out the application, provide two references, and this is, again, this is for discussion, provide two references, one, per, one character re reference, maybe one employment reference, um, obviously, I think a, a background check is necessary. Uh, you know, I, I think it should be similar to what an employee would do in, in applying for a job with the town. So we're not reinventing the wheel. Can I just add to this? I think sure. that, you know, maybe the applications need to be geared or specific to whatever board they're applying to. So, for example, the tech committee. But we need people who are technologically savvy. So even though someone, you know, puts themselves forth and they want to serve a committee, well, they might not be, you know, suited for that committee because of their experience or their, their background knowledge. I so maybe we need to be a lot should, more focused. I think it should also, there should be a little more information on that of what each, each I know you talked about this, what each committee 
entails, how many meetings there are a month, what, what kind of information you should you should know, what your responsible your responsibilities are. Some meetings are some meetings are once a month. Some meetings are the rec committee. You know, I don't know how much. And there's so many people that come up and ask, "What does this committee do? What does the what does the rec committee do?" You know, and and it's again, you want people that hey, if you want to watch sports on TV and fine, but you're not an athlete, you know, it's something like that. You know, another example. Tech committee. Yeah, it may sound fun. I'm not a tech guy at all. If anybody who knows me knows that. I can turn on a computer, I can type, but other than that, I'm really not that person. It's not something that I would apply for just to be on a board. So I think we really need to, again, that turns to when the application comes in, I think we need to put the most qualified people on these, on these positions. And that comes with experience. That comes with knowledge. I also think it's you know, okay to, to leave a, a spot open if we don't think that there's any qualified candidates because I know that there is a lack of people that, that apply for these boards. I, I can tell you right now, after this past week, I think we've had people call into the town hall who applied for positions and asked to remove their mm -hmm. resume. Multiple. Or they, right. they, they don't want no part of it anymore. So that's another whole that's another whole can of worms that we have to deal with. I, I agree with what Jason's saying. It, it is like applying for a job. It's an application. So typically you would have an application with your basic information, probably a resume, maybe a letter, a cover letter, saying why you want the position. I would actually take it one step further, and uh, I agree a background check should be done. I know that there are resources that will be required there, and we have to work that out. But I would take it one step further and suggest that we at least talk about establishing a committee to review these applications um, on which um, one or two uh, council members sit, but members of the public, the chairman of the committee that actually is being uh, applied for, and, and have that meet once a month and, and figure out um, so, so we all understand uh, and have input, including the public, as to, to where we're going. So. You have a comment from the council? Thank you. Public comment on the matter. Continue. Continue. Minutes of previous meeting. He's out that the min. Can I just do a point of order regarding this, uh, this issue? There is no point of order. There's no. Well, it's discussion. We, we can't take any action tonight because if we want to put. Uh, like I said, if we're, if we're going to talk, if the council decides that Jerry stays or goes, or if he resigns, that's something that will be on the next agenda if we're going to do it. But well, you do have it up here. You do have to take some type of action, whether it's your table it until next agenda. You can't just leave it open. No, they can. They discuss the matter, and they're going forward at a later date if need be. But other than that, there's no point of order for you to entertain the council or any comments. You can speak at public comment, but you just can't speak now. that the minutes of the February 5th, 2019 Town Council meetings are hereby accepted. With resolution. Second. Moving second. Discussion? I, yeah, I, I have one one issue with the, the last, the minutes of the meeting. Um, excuse me, one second. Excuse me, one second. I pull this off. The, the last meeting... Um, it's at the very end. It was for the uh, Recreation Committee, and it called for, and it's the same as on this agenda. Um, just going to correct it. So. It's the same as on this agenda. It's, it calls for two alternate members and one, one full-time member. Um, and I remember we had this discussion about it, and I had brought it up and the council didn't want the alternate members. So just just so you know, Paula, just mm -hmm. um, it's, just, it's a minor error, but it's an error. Yeah, I was going to mention that at, towards the end. Um, okay. It is corrected already for March 5th. All right. All right. Thank you. 
Any other comment? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Ayes have it. Consent agenda, Blayton's applications. Resolve that the consent agenda having been posted, all matters being referred to the proper departments and being disposed of, awaiting recommendation, the same is hereby approved. Move the resolution. Second. second. Move and second. Discussion? So I have a question. The, the circus license is in here and it's over here, so I want to clarify. That's just the consent, just telling you. I'm sorry. Okay. Which is correspondence and consent. No, in the license app. I'm sorry. We're not on I'm, I'm sorry. We're on the, yep, okay. yep, 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 yep. Okay. No, I said license application. Yeah, she did. Oh, all right. well, you jumped. You jumped. Did you go over consent agenda? No, she, I think I she think skipped. I think consent agenda, license application, correspondence is after. All right, so license applications. Um, we got a couple of questions here on license applications. Um, Something was brought to my attention last month, um, and that's why it's on here separately. So we're going to approve. If we're going to approve the licenses, we're going to approve every license and except for the one that's <coughs> under A. We're going to approve that one separate, so we can discuss the ordinance and that uh, that business itself. So anybody else have any questions on the licenses? Yeah. Well, I'm going to have to recuse myself from one of them, but the the. The circus is lumped in here, so I want to I want to clarify if the circus is part of this lump you have or if to it's move it off the table because it's disabled. What is the one of the license applications for the food license for the circus? Omit, omit the circus from license applications under one because it's further on in the um, agenda. <coughs> the agenda. Unless you want to address them separately, because you've got it on the amplifier, loudspeaker, and theatrical performance license. Which was tabled, and that's where it was right. in last meeting. Right. On the correct. licenses? No, right. it was where it is now. On the section nine. All right, so we're going to omit the circus and move, because the circus is further down the agenda on its own. Okay. okay. So when these licenses, the circus is omitted, because it's on the agenda by itself further down. So I'm going to recuse myself from the rest of the licenses then. Any other comment? Any public comment? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Ayes have it. Pablo Gonzalez doing business as La Casita Warwick LLC. It's a victualing house license. Be, um, they're going to be going into 53 Providence Street. You have a move the resolution. Move the resolution. resolution. Second. Second. All right. Um, can we have him settle down? I, we can't. He can go outside if he wants to interview. Who's the sheriff? Is the door closed? No. Uh, we got a door shut. We can still hear it loud and clear. No, the back no one was open. Yell. All right. Um, Pablo Gonzalez is doing, uh, doing business as uh, La, La Casita Warwick LLC. Um, this came before I was down in Rose's office, and I'm going to also have this on the agenda for the ordinance to have, have us really look at this ordinance. This ordinance doesn't say who's responsible for paying the tangible taxes. So in this situation, Friendly Guy's Pizza up and left Why the owner of the building was in the hospital, took off, and the building was emptied out except for two pieces of equipment that are no longer there today. Well. Pablo Gonzalez comes in for Gonzalez comes in for a license application for his restaurant to go in there, which is right now four walls, not, no equipment. They're saying Rose is in a predicament because the previous uh, owner, not owner, um, business, Friendly Guys Pizza, has tangible taxes. Now Pablo can't uh, Pablo can't go in there because unless he pays the tangible taxes. And I, I personally have an issue with a new business trying to come into town and an old business that took off out of town and is now leaving the new business with that equipment. Now, I, I would agree if this was going to open up as a pizza shop and he was taking over all the equipment, but that did not happen. None of the equipment was there except for two pieces which are no longer there today. So do we not allow him to open up his business in that same building? where he's putting in all new counters, new 
new uh, machinery, new new cooking ware, and everything else, or do we punish him and say, okay, we're not allowing a business to come in until you pay the tangibles? I think the tangibles are about twelve hundred dollars at this point. So we should be responsible. There's Friendly guys, the landlord. What a new business. There's been past presidents. Didn't that happen with Coup when they first so, came in? So that was a different situation okay. because that was a property owner purchasing a property okay. and okay. the taxes were due. The same okay. identical But, but I have a similar situation where it's a rental property, um, and I hope that we can discuss this at a further date because I Watch think it. that property owner would like to be here to be heard because I didn't think we were talking about it tonight. Well, we're talking about basically with this business, but, but the but ordinance It definitely needs to be discussed. Well, the question is, do we want to give? So, so if we're talking about like his, here's my well, their license. You know, and I, I've had conversations with Rose, and I do have concerns. Like, so for example, if we're going to get into the discussion, you own a property, and you rent it to somebody, okay? So that renter fails to pay their tangible taxes. They leave. There, you want to put a new renter in. That person is now responsible for paying past rent or the property liar owner is held responsible. In my mind, that doesn't make sense. That's like you, you pull up to a gas pump, you know, somebody pumps their gas and takes off. Now I have to pay for their gas because I'm the next guy to pump it. So I understand like we have to collect taxes and we have to like, you know, you know, get this money in somehow, but at the same time, how is that fair to the property <coughs> owner? So I don't know if it comes down to like uh, if, if somebody's behind on their tangibles, that we send a notice to the property owner, if we still hold them liable, to at least let them know the, the that property, they might be the, liable. The landlord could take almost a year to find out. That yeah, that's terrible. I mean, they could have a couple thousand in dollars in tangibles yeah. that they have to pay before they can then rent it out. It just it doesn't seem to make sense to me. This matter's come before this council probably at least a half dozen times in the last 10 years. And the council, previous councils have addressed it. Uh, Al D. Fiore attempted to address it by having the tangible taxes run with the property, and we were taken to federal court, and we were told we couldn't do that. The issue that I've had years ago, and the issue I have right now Excuse is... Excuse me, Mr. Slizer. So the pro it can run with the property but hold on to just, purchase and sale. Hold on one second. The town is not a party to the lease or the contract that the landlord or the property owner has with his tenant. Mm -hmm. So we don't know if it's a triple net lease. Mm -hmm. We don't know whether or not... When the tenant pays his rent on a monthly basis, is the landlord supposed to pay the tax? We don't know that. Mm -hmm. All right. So what happens is the only common denominator between the two renters and the town is the property owner. So, for example, if in fact the property owner would do diligence checks on a monthly basis or a quarterly basis with the town of West Warwick as to whether or not his tenant's tangible taxes have been paid, and he finds out that they haven't, well, that's up to him to address it. But they don't. They don't do that. Which I would agree with. But but here's the here's the question. To, to give them notification. To send they them have. A letter they they have. It. They have notification because they're the landlord. So the landlord's supposed to know what's going on with their property. So if the landlord rents to a restaurant, to a furniture store, to anyone, a tenant, the landlord should know what's going on with that particular piece of property. Do, Rose, do they do they get any kind of notification? Not the landlord. Just I just need you. Just come up to the Landlord's going to get notification on the taxes owed. But if the, if the tangible taxes. All right, that have been raised as an issue in the past because people are bringing property and, and or equipment. If that landlord does not know the existence of tangible taxes, he's not a good landlord. And the issue simply is this. Again, there should be enabling legislation filed with the state to determine whether or not tangible taxes are going to be paid by the former tenant, current tenant, or the only common denominator, which is the landlord. And what have we done in the past when this has come up the past the, time? The, the audience matter? isn't clear. And that's, that's what puts Rose in a predicament because now when a, a business owner comes in and says, I want, I want to open up my business, and, and it's not, again, I, I agree wholeheartedly with if it's business in a business transaction, meaning Friendly Guys was bought by another pizza parlor, they took over that equipment. But here we have a Mexican restaurant or Mexican food restaurant coming in, has nothing to do with pizza, has no equipment in there, it's getting... Basically, when he's leasing the building, it's four blank walls, and he has to remodel it. He's being told that he has to pay the previous owner's tangibles. What's the what, 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 what happened? happened? Well, what's, once again, the closing, if there's a closing regarding the transfer of property, the town's not a party to it, so the town doesn't know what's supposed to happen to the equipment or the furniture and furnishings. Same thing with a new lease. You have no idea what um, Mr. Um, Gonzalez agreed to do with the new, excuse me, the old 
owner of the property as it relates to a property in there. My understanding is that someone removed the property from the land, from the uh, property owned by the um, the landlord, put it out in the parking lot, and took it and someone took it away for scrap. So someone was responsible for taking that property outside of the building and putting it into the parking lot. That was either Mr. Gonzalez or the owner of the property. So if the owner of the property did it, he should be questioned about why he did it, because if Mr. Gonzalez wasn't going to use that property, now the town see the problem is the town gets involved in all this stuff, and that's not the that's not the uh, the so jurisdiction or the authority of the town to get into those things. Either they pay the taxes or they don't. But it's either going it's either going to run or not run. Yeah, one of these doors do have to be open. Are they all closed? Yeah, open one of the doors. But again, Thank enable you. enabling legislation through the General Assembly to determine exactly who owes the tax once this type of situation happens is the best bet to go because you're going to be on a hit and miss. Some people will pay because they want to close and get the property resolved. Other people won't pay. So as that goes forward, how, how long does something like that take? What do you mean? With, this, with the General Assembly? Yeah. It could take five minutes. It could take five years depending on how quickly it gets up there. So also, if you have other, other communities that are in the same situation that want to do this also, you're going to get more support. So bottom line, we just have a, another vacant building. And, and that's the question. Right. Me personally, I, I think we should award the, the license to Pablo Gonzalez to open up his restaurant. And then we go after Friendly Guy Pizza or, you know, whoever. But we need to also look at this ordinance and really f say who's responsible. Because it, it leaves Rose with her hands tied. Because if the landlord's saying, I didn't know anything about this until a year later, and another guy's moving in, it's not fair to him. Again, if it was if it was like for like business or a business sold transaction, I can understand that. But a, an empty building with the equipment not there, I'm having a tough time with. Uh, there should be something clear cut. But um, but I mean, if you're if you're a landlord of of a, a residence and your tenant leaves out garbage out the, out in the front, right? It's not the it's not the tenant's responsibility. We we charge the la the business owner, right? I mean the. Uh, property mm -hmm. owner right so mm -hmm. I mean to me I'm thinking it should be the responsibility at this point of the of the owner of the property mm -hmm. they're the ones that are there you know I mean we do that I know it's a little bit different with residential but we definitely hold the hold the residential owners responsible at that point so, so president <coughs> may I address the council council is the it's really yeah Mr. Council no. it's really not public comment I know I haven't let comment you, on are it. you allowing me to do it no, no I'm going to hold on you, just if you want to bring it up there in public comment you can Fees versus taxes, two different things. Thank you. So, so again, I want my question answered. How is the pro? And do, not do not just there to do diligence because you know they're not lawyers. How do they know that the the renter is not paying the tangibles? Like, they, why aren't we sending? They would have to call the town and right. ask. Yes. Yeah, so, so, so an instance where a tenant up in took off. And sometimes we don't know that they take off yeah. till months or until yeah, until somebody just so, lets us know. So we could we could discuss this on March 5th as the ordinance itself. But my question is, does the council want to approve Pablo Gonzalez as his license? And waive, no. and waive the previous tangible tax? Not waive. They, they go after friendly guy, not, not Pablo Gonzalez. I just, I, all right, so he's not responsible. For and these. then sometimes uh, the debt collection company will come back and say that business is defunct and then I, they won't collect it. So, and again, if a business went bankrupt, the taxes usually go with that bankruptcy, correct? It depends on what chapter. Right. Chapter 7, 13. And there's 11 as well. But there's been no, there's been no notice 11. of a filing of bankruptcy with the friendly guys. So, so that's we, a question. we don't know what happened. Did they go, did they declare bankruptcy or they just took I, off? We, have, just we took haven't off. received notice of it. So all we can go by is what's in front of us. Correct. correct. So my question is, and probably to the solicitor, if we approve this, are we setting a precedence? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you so, are. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm leery to set a precedence tonight by doing that because there are other questions. So, for example, with the case of the person in my ward, it's not two different types of places. It's the same type mm -hmm. of place. So I wouldn't want to just... get in their equipment? Uh, that I don't know. That I don't know. But you know, if, if, if they're getting... Let, let's just say it's an auto shop, and I walk in from one auto shop, and I'm going in, and I'm taking possession of the lifts tire rotation machines or whatever, then but that's probably part we, of your We also don't know, I mean, we don't know what was left behind yet, for a fact. We well, don't know. Tony did send off. But the, the, land, okay. the business owner 
did say to me that he took it and scrapped the, the equipment. The business owner or? No, not the business owner, the landlord. I can tell you for a fact that that stuff was sold. I know that for a fact. And, and it was it was scrapped, so he did get money for it. So, so he made money. The landlord? Yes. yes. The landlord did sell the so stuff. Again, the landlord Pablo what, Gonzalez if, right, pay if, for no, if, but, but not, I'm not saying, no, no, I'm not saying if, the, if the landlord took property that theoretically didn't belong to him, because friendly guys, if they do file bankruptcy, someone's going to come looking for that property. Took the property that doesn't belong to him, scrapped it and sold it, and now he wants a tenant in there, but the tenant's not going to be responsible for the taxes. The owner of the property should pay the taxes. So again, That's what I mean. I'm the asking, common denominator is always the so owner of the property. Until we get the ordinance squared away, I am asking if yeah. we are going to approve Pablo Gonzalez's license to move into 53 Provence can, Street. Can we still go, do we still have recourse to go after the, the property owner afterwards? That's a good question. Make it so, conditional upon the payment of the taxes within 30, 60, or 90 days. You don't care who it comes from, but if the taxes aren't paid, the license is going to be suspended. And they also can go in a, on a payment plan to pay that as well. Well, Mr. Gonzalez is here, and I don't think he wants to pay the $1,200, but if you want to come to the mic, Mr. Gonzalez, this is your license. Just state your name for the record. Good evening. My name is Pablo Gonzalez. Um, I mean, I've been, I've been through it um, the whole time. I, I was here about a month ago, you know, going back and forth. I, I, I'm just you know, observing because I don't really have a say. I'm kind of just waiting for you guys to um, see what you got come up with, you know. I, I did buy different equipment, new equipment, just because mine is a Spanish food as opposed to a pizza place. Um, so it's completely different equipment. Um, and, you know, I, I had no clue that there was tangible taxes or something. Like, as a business owner, I intend to pay my own taxes when I go in, but, um, you know, I didn't know somebody else had, hadn't paid their taxes, but as I, like I said, it's up to you guys, whatever you decide, so thank you. Because we meet in a week, should we just table this until next week and actually have something as the solicitor has suggested um, and, and put a timetable? Clearly the taxes can, need can to I, be paid. Can I ask you a question? When, when was your plan, planning date to start to open up? When were you able to work, when were you able to open up? We were intending to open up the first week of April. Okay, so this so, so so if we wait till next week, this won't put you off and this won't hold you off from opening since you're planning to open in April already. Yeah, yeah, we were planning to open in April, so I I just okay. want you know, so I just want to know if if it would be approved so, so I could like agree, continue agree. on. But, but next next week we could be it's a week away. We could be facing the same thing because. I don't blame you for not wanting to pay taxes and I, that weren't yours, but friendly guys is gone and we still have the same property owner. So unless somebody agrees to pay those taxes, then we're going to be going against the audience. And, and the question is, the question I have is, was friendly guys given another tax, but we don't know where they went. Are they willing to pay their taxes? We, we don't know. We, you know, it's just, that's what I'm saying is, so are we going to know this next form. week? Because we're going to need this information next well, week. Once we again, are you, are you going to ask this gentleman to provide you with the lease that he has with his landlord to determine who's responsible for any taxes associated with that property? Or are you going to ask friendly guys the same question? Or are you going to bring the landlord in here and say, what happened to the property? Property that wasn't yours, so unless the lease gives him right to control the property. At least if we wait till next week, we can have the landlord come in and we can talk to him and make right. that decision with a little more information. But I don't think this town council wants to get involved with commercial, being no, a commercial no, landlord. No, not at all. That's right. Not at all. Can I ask um, another question to Rose? So how many, how many other uh, existing businesses are in this similar situation? And that, because that, that's, uh, you know, I'm looking beyond just this one case. You know, I don't want to set a precedence tonight if we have, you know, 500 well, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a case, it's a case by case. Rotating just, schedule. When um, someone comes into Paula's office, the town clerk's office, and asks that they want to apply for a business license, Paula usually, all the girls will say, well, can you check, you have to check downstairs with tax department to see if there are any uh, delinquent taxes. So to on the property, in, so in, that in the, in the past, you said this has come up half dozen times. What have they ruled? To have Normally, what happens is a, 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 a new business applicant is going to find out through his due diligence before he even gets involved what the tax issue is. 
then he normally resolves it with the landlord because normally the uh, prior tenant is not going to be found. And since the town went to a system of having business licenses, the taxes have to be paid before the new license is provided. And that's, and that's usually worked out privately between the two parties. Okay. But again, in this instance, again, again, we've had probably about a 70% percentage chance of, of, of getting some of these taxes back we, over the past five years? We do get some back, but hmm. the tangible taxes through debt collection right. isn't it's a horrible. high. Yeah, it's not a high um, collection rate. <laughs> but the ones that go th don't go through debt collection and the ones that are going through bankruptcy, we have a pretty good shot of getting them back because, again, the common denominator is the owner of the property who wants to put him in there and knows full well if he doesn't pay the 1200 bucks. And, sir, I don't know what your lease arrangement is, but the owner of the property is losing that rent on a monthly basis. So I say we at least wait and, talk, and t add the landlord into the conversation, then we make a decision from that point next week. Especially, it's not going to hold you up from opening in April if we wait till next next Tuesday. I'll, ma I'll make a motion to table this till next week's meeting. Second. Move and second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Have it. Consent agenda correspondence result that the consent agenda having been posted, all matters being referred to proper departments and being disposed or awaiting recommendation, the same as hereby approved. Move the resolution. Second. Move and second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. Six to seven yards sand spreader resolved that the town council of the town of West Warwick hereby awards the 2019-8 bid for the six to seven yard stainless steel sand spreader to try Power Sales and Service Inc. in the amount of $10,728 for the Public Works Department. The monies will come from the Fleet Maintenance Account 1290-5550. Department will pick up no delivery cost. Move the resolution. Second. Move and second. Dave? This is to replace a failing CN that we have on Truck 3 right now, Carl. Any questions for Dave? Hearing none. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. Amplify a loudspeaker theatrical performance show and exhibit license. Resolve that the town council hereby approves the following application. Steel Entertainment Group, Inc., doing business as Garden Bros Circus, Tension Niles Garden, date April 11th and April 12th of 2019 from 4.30 p.m. to 7.30 p.m. for both days. At, uh, located at the West Warwick Civic Center, 100 Factory Street. I'm gonna make a motion to move this off the table. Second. Moved and off the table, seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Ayes have it. Now I need a motion to move. Make a motion to move it. Second. Forward. Moved and seconded. Discussion? Um, so we tabled this last time. I know Mary Beth wanted to look a little bit more into it. I, uh, I can quickly go over it. I, I'm 100% I'm against the circus. I, as I said two years ago, I did vote for it. I received many emails from many constituents and people from across the country that were against the circus. I looked more into it through that following year. And through my research, uh, I decided to vote against it last year. It was a four to one vote last year. Um, this year, I'm hoping that, you know, I understand that it's gonna bring money into the town, but at what cost is it worth bringing that money into the town? I, yes, I know we're, we're not, we're not uh, rolling money here, but at some point. What you've, what you've learned in the last uh, couple of weeks. <coughs> I've had numerous discussions about, um, Lori was nice enough to forward the laws. I actually talked to some of the people that actually sponsored the law at the State House, um, and uh, the, the law was around the implements used in training the elephants, not the circus itself coming here. Um, so I believe that we probably have a responsibility to make sure that that is, if, if we do move forward, that that is indeed, um, they are following the law, and if not, that they're cited appropriately. The other concern I had was, what, if any, liability the town had, should they be in violation of that law? And I'm told that the town has no liability at all. Any other comment from the council? Um, I would like to say that I will be voting for it for financial reasons. Um, but this is probably the last time I'll vote for the circus. Um, I think that we can certainly have other forms of entertainment I don't think it's it's the right thing to support an institution like the circus, which is a very old institution at this point. Say an elephant, for example, is a plains animal. Well, the 
you know, the back of the West Warwick field is not the plains. So when you see elephants walking across the field, um, it, it kind of goes against, you know, what <coughs> I think animals should be. And, and I have passed a bunch of ordinances, or a couple ordinances, and made some changes in the ordinance for the betterment of the lives of animals. So I'm going to stand by that. <coughs> Any other comment from the council? Hearing none. I have, oh, uh, I have one more. One, just one question. I guess, Laurie, did they follow the process? Were there any issues last year? So to me, it's not just about the money. The it doesn't matter if they, if, they, if they get it for free or they pay a million dollars. It's me, I'm looking at the process and the procedure in place. Um, I, I do agree with the, the state, state law that if they are doing something like any other renter, and they're caught doing something illegal or contrary to state law, then they should, that should be noted, that to me should affect next year, but they should be cited as well. So, and there are police on duty. I have police and fire duty and, there. And just make sure the police, both police and fire, you're gonna be there? I will be there. They all know that the state, what the state law is regarding the animals. And again, it's, it's all, to me it's about the procedure. And it's, it's one procedure that we have in place, so. Just out of curiosity, so when I went, go on to the, the Garden Brothers Circus website, yep. um, I think it says that on these dates they're in Oregon somewhere. Yeah, yeah, because I haven't given them the, okay, but they have multiple. Branches, okay, yeah. so it's not, so yeah. they're different <coughs> traveling groups. Yeah. Okay, all right. Any other comment? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Four to one. Take your <coughs> Additions of taxes resolved that the attached additions in the amount of $749.18 presented to the tax assessor for approval for the town council in accordance with Article 25, Section 5 of the West Warwick Code of Ordinance is hereby approved. Original list on file in the office of the tax assessor. Resolution. A second. Moved and second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Ayes have it. SEI Arendt versus West Warwick, case, uh, case number 13 1098, also 2414 0715, and also 2016 0196 and 2017 0197. Resolved that the town solicitor recommends the town council approves the settlement of the outstanding matter regarding SEI Arendt versus West Warwick, case number 13-1098, case number 2014-0715, 2016-0196, and 2017-0197, based on the opinion of the town tax assessor. Mr. President, may I ask that council table this matter until the next meeting? We'll move to table this till the next meeting Second. on March 5th. All well in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. And if I may, same request for item L to, uh, so the clerk doesn't have to read it. I'm going to make a motion to move letter L, table. litigation, I'm sorry, to table litigation tax assessment cases sponsored by Timothy Williamson to the next meeting. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank Aye. you. <clears throat> Resignation from the West Warwick uh, Library Board of Trustee resolved that the Town Council hereby acknowledges the resignation from M. Nadine Podersky of the West Warwick Library Board of Trustee for the Town of West Warwick. Move the resolution. Second. Move and second the discussion. Um, Nadine has served on this board for many years, dedicated to the West Warwick Library. Um, it's actually a shame, a shame to see her resign, but I'd like you to send her. Um, a letter of uh, thanking her for all her years of service on this board. Mm -hmm. um, again, she's always been great on this board, so um, I, I hate to see her resign, but it is what it is. Any other comment? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Ayes have it. Reappointment slash appointment for the West Warwick Public Library of Trustee Board. There is four can openings. Can I, can I stop you for a second? with just with the letter N, reappointment and appointment. Um, <clears throat> after looking at this last few days, um, we have 
right now uh, five, five openings between two boards. And I want to make a motion to table any reappointments or appointments tonight and going forward until we have the procedure in place that we have been talking about tonight. I know everything ties in, and I, I know there's people here looking to be appointed or reappointed, but this is the reason why. Um, right now, what, what's come to us in going back to the procedure is we have seven people in these of these two boards looking to be appointed. Um, and there are, there are five, I'm sorry, yes, five positions. So right now in front of us, we have a letter for, re, three letters for reappointment. They're just a paragraph letter. An email for reappointment. An application for, an, two applications for new appointments. And those applications <coughs> are ones you get at the clerk's office and fill out. We also have an application done on an employment application and a resume. So if this doesn't spark a getting to a specific procedure, this goes to the root of everything, is filling out the correct form. And this has nothing to do with the people who are, are looking to be appointed or reappointed. And, and I, I do apologize, because I know people are waiting, but I think if we're gonna start this procedure, it really needs to be started now. I don't know how the council feels, but again, just to I wait don't, and go I don't forward, disagree with that. Make any sense. I don't disagree with that. We could have, I, if we had done that at seven o'clock, I know there's some people that have been here for an hour and a half at least. I, I know, but <coughs> you know, at what point is one worth more than the other on this I'm agenda? Not dis so. I'm not disagreeing. Do I have a motion to table? I don't want. Does anybody second? Second. Motion to table and one and two is uh, moved by Councilman Lachardi, seconded by Councilman. Messier. That being said, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. But this means we need to get this process going. You know, because, it by next week? because a lot yes. of things take three, four, and five months. This, this should be done, I'm thinking, by the end of this week. I agree. At least, a at least a preliminary. We can, as we go along, if we want to make it more in depth, we should have something. But this need, does need to be quick. And I do apologize for those of you in attendance that are looking to seek appointment or reappointment. But this has to start somewhere. Reports, monthly finance report. <clears throat> Good evening, councilors. Current year tax collections to date are forty-four million four hundred six thousand two hundred sixty dollars, which is seventy point two nine percent of the levy. Prior year tax collections to date are seven hundred thirty-two thousand four hundred thirty-three dollars and thirty-nine cents which is equal to 43.08% of the budgeted amount. Still trending low, but um, with tax sale letters out in February and March, that number should, should go up. Overall revenues are at 65.96%, which is higher than expected for seven months through the fiscal year. Overall expenditures are trending below target, which is good. Um, I provide you with a summary that you can look at. As you can see, the report submitted, the general fund is trending in the right direction and expected to have a surplus at this point in time. Um, the severance pay line is one we want to pay attention to. It, we've almost used up the whole entire budget, and we still have five months left of the fiscal year. Um, police, and overtime, police and fire overtime are trending to come over, but if you look back at the <clears throat> fire overtime at this time, it was 33.04% over the budget this year. At the same time, it's 13.04%, and police are about the same. Uh, we did put out an RFP for the IT services, and the bids are due tomorrow, so we will have a bid opening at 10.30. We're hoping to reduce the six months for fiscal year 2020. Um, I sent you an email today about the budget timeline and the dates for the budget workshops. Um, yeah, we have an item coming up. Oh, there is? Yes. Yep. Let me see. Yes, I have An that. action we'll discussion. We have one discussion. All right. We'll skip over that. Um, I wanted to talk about the budget process. Should I talk about that when we do the timeline? You can do As, that in the timeline. Yeah. During the timeline. Okay. It's, it's right there. So. It's next? Um, two. Two. Okay. Any questions for Christmas? I, I do. On, on one of these, um, on the Civic Center? Yep. Um, Ouch. It's, and the number is irrelevant, but there's nowhere mentioned about, unless I can't find it. Um, I might be looking at it wrong. But um, the commission 
for the marketing director? Where, where would that be on here? The, the commission, I believe, general wages. It must be in general wages. Mm -hmm. It's got to be in general wages. I'll have to, I have to double check. But it could be being charged to general wages. If you, yeah, if you can double check. Yep, I can just, double check that. Because it is a number that needs to be looked at. Yep, I will double check that. Any other comment for Kristen? Thank you. Thank you, Kristen. Discussion action. Um, ice rink time donated for Friday or Saturday uh, night date to be determined. The class of 2020 is asking for the ice time to be donated to hold a public ice skating event in order to raise money for the junior post prom event that will be held at the West Warwick High School, sponsored by Council President Goslin. First, I'm going to tell you that my daughter is part of the class of 2020. So just before anyone says anything, um, a few students came to me. They asked if they could do a ice skating event. They're asking for the ice to be donated. Um, they hold after the prom, after the gym prom, they go back to the school and they hold a, an event where they all stay there till about five in the morning. They need money to cover food. Um, they bring in like a hypnotist. They do like games. They do all this stuff. So they're asking for us just to donate the ice. The ice would obviously be something that was not rented, so it would be an available night. Um, I did talk to the skate shop question, owner. Question. Um, he also offered to whatever the rentals are, he's going to donate to the class too. So, so, so is this a school sanctioned event? Um, how, how is that working? So uh, it would be the, I'm assuming that it would be, before they do anything, I just said that we have to come here and see if we can get the ice donated first. So it would be the class president and why not? So I, I'd be more so comfortable be if, if it was done by an advisor. By the yes, adult. the advisor will be involved. That would be. Yeah. So right now at this point, though, nothing is moving forward. Nothing's planned until they know that they could get the ice donated first. Like we have to do it. In the so this is, this is us saying, yes, we would do allow you to donate the ice, but not necessarily have the event without the school being involved. Yes, yeah. The school right. obviously would definitely be involved with it. And they'd have to yeah. fill out. Just, again, the same procedure, application, yep, absolutely. and just we would, yeah. Okay. But I didn't want them to stop planning anything because, you know, a bunch of 16-year-olds yep. will go off with a whim and they'll hence, be all standing outside the door. <laughs> hence wanting the school involved, yes. Yeah, <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> so, I mean, this is I, just I the have, first step to... How many hours? Probably like two or three. And I can't see anyone skating more than two or three hours. And again, it, it would be contingent on, the, like, it was open ice time? Yeah, yeah, time. yeah. Okay. So... I don't have a problem with that. No, no problem. So Thank they can you. move forward. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, proposed FY 2020 budget timeline sponsored by Council President Goslin. So we got the timeline from Krista. Um, does anybody have any issues with that timeline? So can we just go over no. the dates so we can mark them all? Yeah. Uh, Krista, you have the dates on you? Yep. No. Mon Monday, and just so everybody in the crowd can know that. This is the time when it comes time for budget talks that people want to be involved. This is the time for the budget workshops to come out here and voice your concerns, opinions, input. This is, that's the perfect time to do it during those, mm -hmm. spe specifically those two workshops. There's a, public uh, workshops. The public workshops, yes. Um, it's definitely the absolute is the time to come here and be part of it. Um, so the first one I think is... is yeah, the, the first budget workshop would be Monday, March 18th well, at 6 p.m. Want to go line by line? Is that a problem for anybody that date? Monday, March 18th? 6 p.m. Good, everybody? I'm good with all the dates. I'm good okay. with all the dates. Yeah. But you want to share the dates? The only, the only question I had was we had one last budget workshop at the end last year. I don't know I, if we want to keep it that way. I can't remember why we, after the public, after the two public hearings we if had. If there's any changes, we kept yeah. it. Yeah, okay. In case, we, in case the council had any changes. Can we, can we just public quickly public say the date? So okay. the 18th is the first one. The second one was Tuesday the 26th was Correct. the second one at yep, 6 p.m. as well? Yep. And then the first public hearing would be Tuesday, April 2nd at April, 6 p.m. And now the April 2nd one is prior to the council meeting, I think. Correct? There should be a, usually the first Tuesday of the month. I, yeah, is, the, it's, I don't know. Do we have a council meeting yeah, on the should, first? Yeah, it should be yeah. the first, the yeah. first yeah. Tuesday of the month. Okay. Um, so that one, the, so that will be at 6, 6 p.m. as well? Then? Right. Do we, do we all all dates are at 6 p.m., correct? Yes, yes. yes. 
And then the second public hearing would be April 9th, Tuesday, April 9th at 6 p.m. And then if needed, a third budget workshop could be Monday, so, April 22nd. So I, don't, I would only request every other date works except for, except for the 9th. I, could we do the second public hearing on the 16th prior to that council meeting? I feel like the other one is just to coincide with that one. Um, I don't know. It, it's <laughs> April vacation, so I okay. don't know. Sometimes we stay away from April, but it's completely up to you guys to not okay. on me. Okay. Just, I'm not going to be here for the ninth, but it's the second. It's the second public hearing. But. And we could do Monday the eighth. I'm, I'm away that whole oh, week until. Yeah. Oh, okay. Sorry. I mean, you can go. You can do it without me. You did the second one without me last year. I, I don't have a problem. Again, I'm I'm here throughout. Probably who knows. I have no place to go. And then the. The third work, the third workshop. Did we did we do I it contingent? Extra, I got extra yeah. lunch. Did we do the third workshop contingent on that we needed it last yes. year? I think. If correct. necessary. Right. Yeah. Okay. So you want to do the second public hearing on the sixteenth? No, you can do it on the ninth. Like you had it. Oh, like you okay. Had a We're going to stick with fine. the ninth. Yeah. Okay. And then what was, there was the third workshop. The, if if needed, on do you want to set that one as we need it? If we need it, we can. Well, after the public workshops, we'll see what and, we need. And unfortunately, anybody who's been involved or has come to these workshops, it's it's very uh, unattended, unfortunately. Um, so we can go by ear. I mean, we can go through two workshops and have three people in the entire crowd, yeah. um, and all the department heads. Uh, so. That could be determined. We could set that up. At a later yeah, there's time. And with the second one, April 9th, there's time to post that if we need to have we've, it. We've done them in the second. past on Saturday mornings, thinking it would improve. Mm -hmm. We've done up till midnight. And we've done all sorts of things with these budget hearings. And it hasn't increased, hasn't increased attendance, I can tell you that. Um, the other thing I wanted to bring up for that is just to, I'd ask that maybe we can put in a process where we vote there's a vote taken on each line so that there is a clear direction as to what the council as a group wants to do with each budget line that they choose to change or modify. And then what I've done in the past. You want to do line or department? Line. line. My line. And what I've done in the past is I keep an errata sheet and basically it tracks the effect on the budget overall, <laughs> line by line. But that way there's no confusion as to what the intent is. I think it's a good idea. Yeah, because that happened. I mean, not all. we're not going to have discussion on all lines, but there'll be lines where there'll be discussion. And the more clarification, the better. That's not a bad thing. I right. Agree. Yeah. Yep. Any other questions for Crystal? <clears throat> Thank you. Ordinance. Thank you. Huh? Ordinance. Oh, oh, yeah, right. Do you, uh, the departments that were listed on the, for the budget workshops, do you want to keep that the same going forward? For this time? Does okay. anybody else have any issue with that? No. That's what we did last year. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Organization workshop continued with the organizational workshops of the report created by OM Solutions LLC, sponsored by Councilman Lachardi. Uh, the reason I, I brought this up is because I think the date was January 26th, and um, we had a workshop here based on the organizational workshop um, that was done on both the sewer department, sewer plant, and the second one was done on on DPW Public Works. And we we didn't get through all of it, so I'm just you know for discussion with the council, you know, there's, there's a lot I think we still need to talk about, and I I'd, I'd like to have that that person back in, well, the Charlie part, Lombardi. The the part I got out of that was in, in somehow or another. I got accused of shutting him down. I didn't shut him down. He actually said, I want to close with saying this. And he went into his closing speech, and that's where I thought he was done. I, I could have let him go on all night that night. We, we set that aside for that night. I, I have no problem bringing him back. But well, I'm not accusing you of shutting him no, down. No, no, I'm, I'm just, not saying you I'm, did. I just had more questions and comments. So I, I'm thinking, I don't know what everybody thinks. I, I'd like to finish it. So other way, I mean, we paid for it, and we, we wanted it. And I think either way, we need to discuss, you know, if we're going to move forward with it, how we're actually going to, I know there's, there's union negotiations involved with some of these, but 
if we're going to implement, what part we're going to implement, if we're not going to implement. I mean, some of the things we can't do, um, but it's just hanging out there. So I, I'd really just like to just finish it and, and move on, and hopefully before budget time. I don't know how anybody, what anybody else thinks of that. I, again, I, he, he stood up here, and Dave, you're still here. Um, that gentleman stood up and said, I want to close with this. He said his closing remarks, and he shut it down. He left. So it's, it's online. It's a public document. We've shared it. If the council wants to discuss it further, 98% of everything that was in there was contractual. So if, I mean, we're going to go into contract negotiations. Now, as a council, I mean, we had an executive session tonight about contracts. We're also going to have another executive <coughs> session about contracts. Do you want to discuss some of that changes? We could. I mean, that we want to see I, I have more questions for him. So, I mean, if I, that's something I, I'll do through email. and it, it doesn't matter to me. I just wanted to figure if we're going to do it in open session, no, we can, closed we can session, do, then I won't, I won't put the email through, you know? I, I guess I would ask um, the town manager and head of DPW whether there are other things that we didn't hear from him, what to expect from him. I, I, I actually did hear him say he didn't really get to the Civic Center. He talked about, so, and, and would he charge us for coming back because we paid enough Thank you very much. <laughs> uh, I would suggest maybe you can invite him to our next executive session, seeing a lot of it is to do with the contract negotiations that are coming up. That may be a good forum for you to ask him okay. some more questions and that totally up to the council. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I am sure that I can get him to come back with, at no charge to the, to the town, that's for sure. And do you have a check sheet, David, of, of things that you have implemented, other things that are not contractual? I do, I do. And maybe you can share that so we can be more comfortable. Absolutely, and, and if anyone wanted place. to meet with me during the week to go over some of the things that we're going to target in that, I'd be happy to sit with you anytime, anytime you want. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Ernie, do you have any? I mean, well, again, I, I think that uh, what... Uh, what Mr. Lombardi was doing is reviewing the recommendations, you know, as they're listed there. Uh, and as the council president said, it is online, it was online, it's available. Uh, when you go through that, you can look at the ma what's management related, we can do what we can't do. Right. Uh, you can only discuss so much of the issues that are contractual, right. other than a general summary, you can't go into detail along those natures. Uh, so I, I would agree with Dave that uh, the substance of the, the major issues, uh, you know, some are management, but most of them are operational that are governed by contracts that we have. All right. Okay, so, we're, so we're agreeing to invite him back uh, uh, for the executive session? I mean, I, 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 yeah, I mean, I say let's do it. Yeah, I just want to close it. Mm -hmm. All right, Dave, let them know. But, it, but it, if you could provide us with a summary of, of things that have been implemented, that'd be great. Thank you. Road Repair Townwide, sponsored by Councilman Lajardi. Um, I put this on there. It's, I've been told it's somewhat vague. Uh, I didn't mean it to be vague, but the more you put on there, it's just going to spark more and more questions that we would have discussion on here. So. Um, with the road repair, I know um, there's some roads in town that are, that are great. There's some roads that need a lot of work. There's some roads that need patching. And it seems like we're just talking about the same roads all the time. And I know I, I have money left in road bond money, and some of my roads do qualify in the CDBG zone for, for grant money. But um, is, there a, is there a plan? I know not every, every ward has money left. Is there a plan moving forward as far as as far as fixing some of these roads? Because I I don't know if they're only gonna get worse. I mean, I know I know Church Street is, is patched and patched and patched and at some point you, you just can't patch it anymore. So and, and that's a very expensive road. So is there anything in place, do you know, Ernie, that yeah. that or money we can go to 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 fix some of these? Well, other than what is the remaining of the last uh, uh, road bond, road bond uh, 
there is no funding source other than CDBG, and that is a competitive <coughs> process. So something that you can't count on, you know, going forward. Uh, as far as a, a plan to have a new row bond, uh, I don't see that for the next few years. Okay. Uh, we have to build back up our, our fund balance. We have to build back our ability for, you know, finances to go out when we go out to, to try to get a favorable rate. The only other alternative is to budget it in the capital budget. Put, put so many dollars in uh, for road repair and maintenance above what's in the standard public works budget, which is the maintenance. And again, that's a budgetary decision. You know, right. if there's money in there, how much is it in there? Uh, and, you know, the budget is where priorities, priorities are. Some water, priorities. Yep. So as we go through the process, uh, the budget process, uh, you know, certainly when we get to capital, that can be a discussion and see if funding can fit in there based upon all the other needs of the uh, town. Okay. So to answer your question, is there something in the foreseeable future? No. Other than at some point, uh, a new road bond, uh, but that's not programmed as a certain time yet. All right. Thank you. Any other questions? Thank you, Jim. Okay, am I reading the upcoming appointments? Where am I going? Yeah. Yeah. Upcoming appointments, Sewer Use Appeals Board, one, opening for alternate member with the term to expire on 10, 2021. West Warwick Public Library Trustees, four openings with a term to expire on February 2019. Board of Tenant and Affairs, one term to expire on 2, 2019. Board of Assessment and Review, one opening with a three-year term. Board of Canvases and Registration, one six-year term. Two alternate openings for a six-year term. Cape County Water Authority, one opening with a seven-year term. Recreation Committee, one full member. It should be two full members. There's two openings on that board, on that committee. Okay. I only know of one. If somebody resigned, I didn't get a letter. Okay. Are you looking at so as of right now, yeah. I only have one. Yeah, has not sent a letter. Has anybody gotten in touch with him? I, I don't know. Um, until he either sends a letter in or at least lets us know that he wants to resign. He, he should at least send a letter or his term runs out. I, I don't know how to get a hold of yeah, him. Yeah, we'd have to figure out how to, if we could. I, I don't know how to get a hold of him, so we may not get anything. I, I don't even know who it is because I'm just so, going about what I have and I only have one opening. Because I don't um, know who's. It's, it's actually, we're talking about Jack Chagru's position. Um, we haven't heard a scene from him. In a little while, so we have to try to get him, somehow get in touch with him. You must have his number on file. We can try and call him. Isn't there something where oh, they missed three meetings? Hold on one second, Mr. Villain. You want to just? Out of town, I can give you some information to get a hold of him. Huh? I said he's moved out of town. I can give you some information to get a hold of him. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. 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 Anna Spodnik, Carpenter Court. When we talked about the appointment to the pension board, um, Councilman Messier seemed to uh, think that it was the, the job of the public to inform this council about people that you appoint, which is absolutely ridiculous. It's an insult to the people that put you in office. Now, as far as I know, when you appoint someone, just as you appoint the solicitor, they serve at the pleasure of the council. They can be dismissed for absolutely no reason. That's any board, any appointee, and this is as per the charter. Correct me if I'm wrong. So when your people sit here and members of the police and fire union and anyone else that is affected by the pension in this town have spent their time to come here tonight in a show of solidarity saying we don't want this I certainly hope that this council takes into consideration what the town wants not what the state wants what the town wants you have the right to remove anyone without cause without reason from any board now I think out of a courtesy 
to our police and fire, you all better think about this very much so. You all knew about this last year during the, during the election. Don't, don't shake your head because it was on social media last year. It's amazing how you know what's on social media now, but you're saying you didn't know about it last year. I mean, Ms. Williamson, I don't know you from Adam, but you walked around, you know, campaigning against Angelo Padula saying he's a convicted felon and doesn't belong on the town council, and yet you knew about someone's record, and yet you still went ahead and appointed him. So, you know, there, there's no excuses here. The town is watching. The town is asking you to do the right thing. You don't have to justify it as far as any dismissal. Anyone can be removed from any position that is serves at the will of the council. <clears throat> Plain and simple. And maybe some people ought to learn their jobs, like the charter and the OMA. How, how long is it going to take? How many years do people have to be in office to actually read it? And I do want to thank you, Jason Lachardi, for being the voice of integrity in this, in this town. People do appreciate it. Thank you. Hi, uh, my name is Ernest Levine. I'm the president of IBPO Local 312, which represents the entire West Ward Police Department uh, sworn members. I'm here this evening on behalf of the members of the International Brotherhood of Police Officers Local 312, which represents all sworn members of the West Ward Police Department. We have learned that a newly appointed member of the West Ward Pension Board, Mr. Jerry Leet, has a very concerning criminal record. Not only has Mr. Leet been convicted of felony embezzlement in 2001, the facts of the case make this conviction even more alarming. Apparently, Mr. Leet stole sports memorabilia from a charity golf tournament to benefit the family of murdered Providence police officer, Sergeant Stephen M. Shaw. <clears throat> Although we certainly understand that some people can change over time and learn from their past mistakes, we simply cannot, in good conscience, stand silent on this matter. It is shocking to the conscience that Mr. Leet, a convicted felon who stole from a fallen police officer's charity event, was appointed to the West Warwick Pension Board where his duties will be to oversee the investment of millions of dollars in assets, some of which belong to the hardworking and dedicated police officers of the West Warwick Police Department. We, the members of IBPO Local 312, adamantly oppose Mr. Leet's appointment to the West Warwick Pension Board and will support any and all lawful actions taken by the town of West Warwick to remove Mr. Leet from this appointed position. <coughs> Alternately, we respectfully request Mr. Leet's resignation without further delay. We appreciate your attention in this matter and look forward to working together to keep West Warwick moving in a positive direction. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Who's getting up first? Burton Malahan, Monterey Drive, West Warwick. Uh, Mr. President, I, I tried calling up uh, both of my uh, Alderman John and Jason, and both their mailboxes were filled, so I thought I'd bring it up tonight. But uh, Northeast sent me, uh, it's the revaluation group, they sent me out uh, new valuations on both of my pieces of property, which I understand that I get every time we get a reval. But anyways, uh, a listing of all properties is available on the Internet at www.newerval.com. Now, you go on that site... And this is what I'm going to tell you. This site is not secured. And then it'll tell you, and it tells you to close the site permanently. Now, years ago, you could always go on that site and check your neighbor's houses, check your businesses, right? It never had any trouble. I've never seen anything like this before on a computer. I thought maybe I could get some answers from my two council members why they're doing this on that site. You can't get into the site. Bert, the first link, and I noticed this on the website, on the town website, the very first link, if you click on that, it comes up with that. But if you go further down, the new reveal website is actually on the bottom. You are right. There's a problem with the link. When, you, when you're reading the first paragraph... It scares the hell it says, out of you. It's, it, well, it's, it's, and then there's one link. If you go into this, you're in real trouble. So that I, don't, that I don't know, but I've been on that site all weekend because I think every council member has probably received numerous phone calls and concerns with that. And I'm actually going to 
Can you get it now? So, so in other words, you can't use the www.newavel.com? The, the link, if you're using the link on the West Warwick <coughs> website, it works perfectly fine. Um, and, yet, and you have no problems. I've been on that website all weekend. It's been nonstop. And trying to explain the <coughs> value increases and... So what... what, what, there, what there was people out there saying that your house went up 25%, you're going to see a 25% tax increase. That was totally wrong. It's, it scared people. It did. So, and, and absolutely. And so what I actually had was um, the tax assessor <coughs> send over, and I think the entire council was on this email, um, the percent of increases on houses in uh, single family. Like single family went up 20, average of 28%. Condos went up 17%. Two family owner occupied were average of 32%. Two family, 31%. Three family, 39%. Four family, 40%. Five family, 28%. Six plus went up 25% in commercial on average of 7%. Now, I've had commercial businesses call me and tell me that it, their valuation went up 160, 180, 200,000. And you, you do have to appeal. You have to do your homework and appeal if you feel that it's not right. I, I wasn't even looking to appeal. I was just looking to get out of the site so I could check other houses in my community and other businesses where I have a piece of business property yep. to see how fair it was, which I have done for the last 30 or 40 years. Mm -hmm. And it, it's disturbed me that I couldn't get on this site. Ernie, Ernie, can you can we provide can the right address? Actually, you can type in the Why do they make it so complicated for, for a senior to do that? I mean, you, you, you know, I'm... These can computers the are beyond me. Can I see the sheet of paper? Huh? Can I see that paper? Does that have the web address on it? Yeah, this has the site on it, right? I got it circled out. Right, can you grab that from Mr. Mollahan? And we can type it in right now and we can check it. Thank you. That's, that's all I'm asking. I'm not asking the, the variances. <clears throat> but, 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 but is this the same outfit that did the reval? Absolutely. Nothing yeah. changed. Same outfit, same company. And then when you call them, you can't get any answers from them. <coughs> yeah. yeah, we don't have the same problem you do. Unless you typed it in wrong and it's leading you somewhere else. Guys, guys this really isn't on the agenda. So if Mr. Um, Mollihan wants to talk with somebody after the fact. Again, did, did you do that site? You got yeah, that he just site? went on. It, it just worked. went right to it. it and worked. you didn't get any warnings? No nope. warnings? Nope. No. You might have a virus on your computer. Pass, pass that off to you. Okay. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. No. Mr. Kelsey. Peter Kelsey, 260 East Greenwich Avenue. I can first tell you that I do not miss controversial meetings after serving on the council myself for three terms. I'd just like to make two observations tonight um, for the council's consideration. You were talking about um, tangible taxes, and, and you're, you're trying to take a tangible tax, which is the responsibility of the business owner, and think to put it over to the person that owns the property that that business owner may be renting from. There's really no way that that property owner should be considered having that responsibility. If you're going to do that, you need to have other items that the property owner needs to know. He has to have the, avail the availability to do an inventory on his renter's equipment, which doesn't seem to be something that is reasonable. If you're going to change that method of, of taxation from business owner to property owner, <clears throat> there may be uh, other items that need to be changed within possibly the charter or the or the or the tax uh, uh, the the tax structure itself. Second thing and the last thing that I like to mention tonight seemed to be pretty controversial about appointments. Uh, Mary Beth had mentioned that you were considering a, con a committee. To, um, to, to do that, to serve that function uh, for the town. Um, I can tell you that the town already has the committee to do that. 
and it is in the charter. It's you, the town council. That's your responsibility, only your responsibility, to make sure that you vet all of the people that you appoint to each and every board. You are the people that were voted in to the town of West Warwick. It's not something that an employee should be assigned to do. They could do that in, prep, in your preparation as far as gaining information, but as far as getting uh, resumes, as far as getting the work experience, as far as getting things that you need to know now possibly more than ever, that's your responsibility to get it done. You can have somebody help you. The bottom line is not appointing a committee because then you have to have people to vet the committee that you want to have the committee <clears throat> being a vetted purpose for appointees. Doesn't make any sense. It's not, a, not an easy job. Not an easy job. Take the responsibility more seriously. Trying to get people, Jason, you, you mentioned that there's a lot of openings. There's always been a dozen, sometimes even two dozen openings of all different appointees, whether it be a tree sergeant or whether it be the, uh, um, the, the flag, uh, the uh, person who puts the flag in the front of the building, or whatever the case is. There are many, many uh, tech, uh, tech appointments that seemingly never get properly uh, um, appointed. Um, but thank you for your time. Tough job. You guys have to do it. Thank you, Mr. Kelsey. Thank you. Any other public comment? Mike Pay at Rocky Hill Road, North Situate, Rhode Island. Um, I'm here as a retired police officer with concerns to that appointment. I'm just asking respectfully that the council, you still have it on the agenda tonight. You haven't taken action yet. Listen to the people. You have the right to appoint or remove people from boards and committees with no just cause. They're at will. And all I'm asking you out of respect for your constituents and your employees for their privacy. And I don't know this gentleman from Adam, and I don't even know if he's in the room. And it's nothing against him. It's just, to me, I think it was a, a bad appointment. It's, it's, you know, we all make mistakes. I think this council, by far, would serve the community and its employees best by making action tonight. You have it on here. You can take a vote for his resignation. Or you could just ask him if he's in the room, if he's willing to resign. If he does, then it's, it's a done issue. You don't even have to do this on any other agenda. So I just ask that you, you know, before you close out the night, that you think about this and think what's, you know, best for the community as a whole. You don't need litigation. And, and, uh, and do what's right and move forward. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. John Reed, 62 Andrews Avenue. Mr. Kelsey basically said what I was looking to say. I can't believe, like a lot of things I don't believe that happens here, that after all these years, and some of you have been here a long time, you have no procedure to vent people to do anything. It's all been, and I'm not asking for comments, so it's all been political or who I had coffee with. It's blatant. Sometimes there's only one person that speaks and the rest just... Yes, you know, we got a bunch of bobbleheads, but this is hurting the community. This would have never happened tonight, okay? We wouldn't have gotten embarrassed. The gentleman wouldn't have gotten embarrassed. The police and the fire wouldn't have gotten embarrassed if the town council did their job of venting. I imagine some of you have employees, and I bet your employment application is more detailed than your application for appointment to a town position. That, in my opinion, is embarrassing. And then the other thing that's really embarrassing to me that just came out recently that I can give to you, do you all believe in transparency at the government? Yes. Should it be transparent so we don't have to look at you as like you're all liars? I think that's the way it should be. Do you think that your legal counsel should be transparent with you? Yes. Okay. All right. I can give you this. Then I'll get off. This is how much transparency you have. And I said this over and 
over and over. Thank you. The disciplinary board says the only people that can cure it is you. Because you're a client. Thank you, Joe. <coughs> Any other public comment? This is pretty intense. So, uh, first of all, I'd like to start by uh, letting you guys actually let Just me take talk. Your name for the no, sorry, Jerry 172, Jerry Lee 172, Prospect Hill Ave. <coughs> first, I'd like to start off by apologizing for um, my actions back in 2002. Um, man, uh, I I can't I can't put into words how terrible I do feel about the, what I did. I have the utmost respect for law enforcement, whether people believe it or not, I do. And anybody who knows me knows I do. Those actions that night were not me. They weren't specifically against a fallen police officer. That I would never have done. And I can't make excuses for that night other than it happened. I paid my price. I did what I was supposed to do. And I do apologize to every single police officer, every single member of their family, every single one of their friends. I have the utmost respect for every single one of you. Whether you guys believe it or not, I do. You folks have a decision to make. And with all due respect, I would not resign. I took on, I came to this town. From the minute I walked in, I wanted to do what was good for this town. I do believe that. Some people here don't know me, but they, the ones who do know that I am here to fight for every taxpayer, every employee, every resident. And this is why I got on these boards. I want to make sure everybody's protected, everybody's treated fairly and equally. Some people want to hold my past against me. That, that is their do right. But unfortunately, I, I can't resign. Thank you. Any other public comment? Hearing none. Can I uh, can I put an item on the uh, next agenda for the removal of Jerry Lee to the uh, from the pension board? How oh, well, we got to word that, Tim? Yet I don't know. Just we'll word it like that. Yeah, okay, yeah. but you put it on the next agenda, please. It'll be March fifth is the next meeting. It's a week from today. I don't want to do it today. Legal, so put it on the next agenda. Make a motion to no more public comment. Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. All in favor? Good job. Aye. Have a good night. Thank you. 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 Thank you.